How's everybody doing? I hope you are doing well. We've got a lot of news to get into today. Um, we are in, I think right now, Great Depression 2.0. Now, a lot of people may laugh at that. They may think, what are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense, right? There's no soup lines. There's not people waiting in line uh, you know, for soup, uh, for assistance. Um, but it's actually worse than the Great Depression when you look at it. Uh, today, we have people that are getting food assistance. Uh, and this is uh, put out by the debt clock, U.S. debt clock. And um, the number of people on food assistance here right now is over 42 million. And let's take a look at some other comparisons between now and the Great Depression time here. So between 1929 and 1935, you know, that span uh, there. So during the Great Depression, homes were three times the average salary. Today, it's eight times. So people ask, why aren't prices crashing? Well, that's because we're giving out loans now. Um, this is even worse than 2008 as far as the loans. And it's not the same type of loans, but it's uh, very low down payment loans now are, uh, are the common thing. And we're talking about the 1% loans. Uh, cars in the Great Depression were 46% of the annual salary. Today, 85% of the annual salary for a car, the cost of a car. Uh, rent took about 16% of the annual household salary. Today, it's 42%. Um, that's uh, almost three times as bad. Uh, wow. So, I mean, this is way worse as far as affordability. Uh, yes, people don't look like they're doing bad unless you look at the rising homelessness, the 10 cities. Um, and think about this. We still have programs that were implemented in 2020 that have not ended. We still have cities with eviction moratoriums. Uh, we still have uh, people on repayment programs for utilities. It's, um, you know, it's not being solved, right? We had uh, student loan payments frozen for three years. Now, supposedly, they're going to start next month in October. We'll see how that goes. Uh, the bottom line is there's a lot of things happening right now to keep uh, this whole population from imploding. I shouldn't say the whole population. There's always going to be a portion of the population that's doing very, very well. And, um, you know, but as far as most people, studies range uh, from 60 to 73% people living paycheck to paycheck. Half the country doesn't have a $400 uh, savings put away for an emergency expense, uh, on and on and on, right? So this whole thing is propped up by debt. And of course, we're seeing debt explode. The debt levels explode. And people talk about the national debt at 33 something trillion, uh, close to that anyways. Uh, what people don't talk about, though, is the total debt. The total debt for, for the United States globally, it's over 300 trillion globally. But for the United States total debt, we are at $102 trillion. By total, I mean adding up business, state, local, uh, government, financial institutions, um, including household and individual debt, $102 trillion, folks. We're beyond the point of ever being able to repay this. And if you just look at the national debt, just the national debt, we're approaching a trillion dollars annually in interest because of the high interest rates, right? So we have to borrow the money um, and the United States is paying interest on the money that we borrow. Um, it's unsustainable, folks. And they think that people can uh, work, you know, two, three jobs uh, forever. Well, there's a reason why today people, well, it's about 50% of the population here in the United States depend on some sort of medication because people are burned out they're stressed out uh depression is exploding uh i notice it just driving around and interaction with the public that people are more short-tempered now people are more distracted now people are uh, you know i think they're finding ways to maybe to drown their sorrows or to hide their worries and i think a lot of people do that through substance abuse uh, I don't think I know. <laughs> and if you just look at the homeless people, I mean, most of them are just so, so whacked out of their minds. Um, but why are these things getting worse all the time? And why is the uh, severity of it uh, increasing? I mean, so things are getting worse, but it's accelerating, right? So homelessness in 2020, year over year was an increase of, I think, um, 3%. And then it was 
seven percent then it was ten percent then it was eighteen percent and it varies city by city but it's getting worse each year what's it going to be a 30 percent increase next year and then a 50 percent increase and then a 100 percent increase is homelessness going to start doubling here in a few years um so the tent cities that you see now are going to be you know just going down the block like um it's uh, it's really alarming it's really scary what's happening you know i'm in california so i see it um i think you know more of a uh, frontline view than maybe a lot of people watching this i do have a lot of california viewers though uh but my point is uh it's getting worse and what's going to stop it yeah you know, what's being done to stop it not much uh actually a lot is being done to make it worse right they're, they're throwing gasoline on the fire um more debt and money printing and uh, letting people borrow more money uh, they say that's going to be the solution. Well, it makes things look good in the meantime. For example, gross domestic product is the basically the sum of all products and goods and services sold in the United States. And what makes that look better? Well, the more debt you go into, the better the GDP looks. Let's put it that way. Your spending is a big part of GDP. And GDP is the number that they need to keep inflated enough so they can say, oh, there's not a recession because there's not negative GDP growth. So, of course, uh, there's this incentive um, to keep the banks propped up, to keep the banks lending, to keep you going further in debt. And if you file bankruptcy, discharge your debt and get another credit card just a few weeks later. And I know that for a fact. I know several people uh, that I have spoken with. I work in the financial industry. Uh, several people have gotten credit cards within weeks of filing bankruptcy. Uh, and that's done by design, folks, because they want you to keep spending because that makes themselves, that makes the quote unquote leaders look good. They could sit back and say, look at this GDP. I'm doing so good. The economy's strong as hell. And uh, mean in the meantime, it's all propped up on debt. I mean, for the most part. Uh, so pretty, pretty scary times, folks. But uh, let's get into some other news. A pretty big subprime automobile lender folded. And this is the second biggest one. Uh, this year here, this one was out of Florida and um, some big layoffs also came out of this here. Quote, the industry has been impacted by inventory scarcity and vehicle price inflation stemming from supply chain disruptions and multi-year declines in new vehicle production. So they're still talking about supply chain disruptions, uh, slowdown in vehicle production. Just wait until the U, uh, UAW goes on strike. Um, that's going to be coming up here on Thursday. Will they reach an agreement? If not, um, how much production is going to be uh, dropped off and how much of a of a bigger um, supply chain issue are we going to have with vehicles then? Um, and will vehicle prices start shooting back up? Well, actually, they went up last month from the prior month. So from July to August, prices went back up uh, a fraction of a percent. Now, they're still down over 7% year over year. So we're seeing this weird uh, mix of rising prices and some falling prices, but more rising than falling and the cost of living in general overall is getting worse. Um, the things you have to have, energy, uh, food, uh, those things are going to continue to go up in price, I think, unfortunately. The things you don't have to have, um, you're going to see maybe more price weakness in those areas, like maybe entertainment items. But then again, it's pretty interesting because we see these streaming platforms always raising their prices. I think Netflix was the one that rose their uh, rose their rates in the past few months. So uh, even people that are spending money on things they don't have to have are still willing to go into more debt. It seems like to, to get these items, even they don't they don't have to have them. You don't have to have Netflix. Uh, but I think people are just so lost right now, and like I said, depressed. Half the country on medication that they could just sit back and watch TV. And just not have to think about the real world. That's why people, I think, get lost in entertainment and TV shows. Because the real world, you know, to them is uh, something they really don't want to think about. Uh, just my opinion. I mean, please let me know what you think about that. Let's go ahead and transition, though, into some other news here. Now, with interest rates that are much, much higher now than they were a year ago, uh, mortgage rates more than doubled. Uh, the average credit card I just read is 22.3%. Um, right now, the rate hikes that we've seen, what was it, 11 in a row, and there could be another one before the end of the year, even though they've been small, uh, we're now actually uh, higher than we were during the previous hike uh, back in 2007, 2008, when they started raising rates, which triggered a meltdown in the housing market to begin with. 
Now it's looking like the meltdown is beginning in commercial real estate. Uh, also starting to happen in automobiles down 7% year over year. Certainly not a crash. Uh, what's happening in commercial real estate, I would label that a crash. Uh, automobile prices is not so much a crash. There's still too much uh, credit out there, too much available uh, loans to even people with terrible credit scores. Uh, so even though subprime lenders are folding up, um, we're still seeing a lot of lending happening out there because of the bank reserve requirement, right? No, no reserve requirement there. But this uh, auto lender in Florida, a pretty big company, um, liabilities between 100 million and 500 million on its bankruptcy filing. And um, there was another big one back in April that abruptly closed its doors. This one also had several different locations, so it wasn't just one dealer. Um, but these things add up, and you may not be able to tell on the surface, but behind the scenes, things are really, really uh, coming to a head, I think. And what's likely to happen, I think, is going to be some sort of freeze up in the entire credit system. Uh, if that happens, that's pretty scary because um, society is going to get really, really ugly and really, really scary. Um, just a couple days with the shelves not being restocked, uh, shelves start to go empty in the stores. And um, you know, with the supply chains the way they are, it only takes a few days without shipments happening for those shelves to become empty. Now, we've talked here about food shortages. Um, and it's not just that the food's not there. The food's out there. But will it get to the shelf near you when you need it? Because see, if the system goes down, if the credit system freezes up, everything shuts down because everything runs on credit. Trucking shuts down, delivery shut down, no items on the shelf, right? So that's why I always try to say every few episodes, have at least 30 days emergency expenses out of the system, food, water, and essential items, uh, at least 30 days. I'm trying to do six months myself and the cost of living, even that's really hard to do even if you're well prepared and even if you've been planning for it, like me planning for it for years. And by the way, I do have the bug zapper going off. I'm having a mosquito problem here in my garage. Uh, this is my studio, my garage. So I've got the door closed. It's hot running a fan. Hopefully it's not too loud. So yeah, bug zapper. Sorry. Uh, mosquito problem here in Southern California. Um, I don't like to spray a bunch of repellent on me. <laughs> I don't like to spray a bunch of repellent in the air. So again, sorry about the zapper, but let's talk about, something else here. Let's transition a little bit. Uh, credit card debt here. And this was pretty surprising to me. According to data released by the Federal Reserve, uh, this article happens to be about the state of Washington. Um, household Households in Washington owe uh, an average of $8,463 in credit card debt. That's the average. So some people more, some people less. And that makes Washington ranked 13th in the nation, right? So then I started looking into it. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of credit card debt on average, over 8000 And they're only the 13th. Well, let's talk about the states that are actually the worst. And this is out of Wallet Hub here, California, number one, with an average credit card debt of $10,000 uh, per person. Texas is the second at $9,216. Uh, the states with the least average credit card debt, still uh, quite a lot, though. Is uh, Wyoming? They ranked 50th, so they have the less, uh, the least debt. But even the least debt is seven thousand six hundred seventy dollars per household. Uh, okay, sorry, this is per household, not per person. Um, still a substantial number. Vermont was 49th with over seven thousand dollars per household. Wow. So people are scraping by on debt right now. Um, the programs to help people. Uh, this would have imploded in 2020 if it weren't for uh, you know, all the uh, new money creation, uh, all the new money printed, and uh, gave the uh, the printers, you know, the perfect excuse to fire up the printing presses. And, uh, you know, what's it going to be next? Because now uh, with this inflation problem sticking around, if they cut rates, if the economy really starts crumbling, we see more bank failures or something, something really bad uh, triggers a response of having to cut rates, that's going to be could be the nail in the coffin because then we're going to see this really big inflation that we're seeing right now evolve into possibly hyperinflation. Uh, I don't want that to happen, but I'm afraid that's what's going to happen if they cut rates and if they really open up the spigots even more on lending. Can you imagine prices have barely budged in real estate? Can you imagine if they do an emergency rate uh, drop 
uh, what would happen to prices then and uh, what would things look like? Uh, you know, please let me know what you think about all this, everybody. So what do you think about the uh, Great Depression numbers there? Affordability is much worse now than the Great Depression. More people dependent on uh, help programs versus the Great Depression. Sure, it looked worse than the Great Depression because you saw these, you know, you see these black and white pictures of people waiting around the corner for um, for food. Um, instead of now, you just see people at the checkout lines, you know, swiping these plastic cards. That's what it's uh, that's what it's come to. Right. So interesting time, folks. All right. What do you think about all this? Please let me know down below and let me know what you'd like me to cover. Um, doesn't have to be a link to a certain article or anything like that. Just topics. Uh, please let me know your ideas down below. Really like to hear from you. And thanks, everybody, for supporting me. Big love. God bless.